Okay, so I've been working on the motor controller, uh, as can be expected, and I've come across a, an issue here, which is very common in any of these hard switching uh, power supplies or just anything that switches uh, very quickly. And you can see in these waveforms here, uh, we'll focus on the one on the left here for a little bit, the waveform in yellow is actually the gate signal, or, th or the gate uh, voltage on one of the MOSFETs, and you can see that the rise time is uh, very fast. We have one microsecond per division here, and the rise time on this MOSFET is probably somewhere around 150 nanoseconds, I'd say, um, or thereabouts. Anyway, the, the blue voltage here is actually the battery plus uh, connection on, on the Moore controller, and uh, these are both relative to battery minus, by the way. Uh, this ringing here, uh, is actually between battery plus and motor minus, um, so essentially across the synchronous rectification MOSFETs. And you can see we have a 20 volt trace here, it's uh, 20 volts per division, and uh, this, this blue trace is one division up, so we're at 20 volts coming in here, and this ringing is uh, just insane. It goes up to 54, a peak of 54.4 volts there, uh, right up here, and then uh, continues ringing and slowly tapers off over time. But the thing is, if this 20 volts here was, let's say, battery pack voltage at 80 volts, uh, our MOSFETs would uh, most certainly die, because this ringing would probably be much in, way in excess of the 150 volt breakdown voltage of the MOSFETs. So uh, we definitely need to do something about this. So what I did is I implemented your classic RC snubber. Uh, in this case, I put a... Uh, 48 nanofarad uh, capacitor in series with a 2.5 ohm resistor. I put that across between the battery plus rail and the motor minus uh, rail. And this is the result here. You can see that the ringing is uh, massively reduced. Uh, now only peaks at 29.6 volts. And uh, you can also notice that the, the uh, length of the ringing, uh, it only really lasts for one period and then it settles. Whereas the ringing in this one over here, it just it seems to go on and on and on for quite a while. So this, this 48 nanofarads and this 2.5 ohms, I didn't just come up with this out of the blue. I actually went through uh, a classic method to, to determine uh, the optimal value of your snubber components. So what I did here is I measured the frequency of the ringing uh, of this waveform here, which turned out to be about 1.55 megahertz. Uh, then what I did is I added a capacitor between the battery plus terminal and the motor minus terminal. Uh, and I apologize, I don't have a waveform uh, for that, but uh, I measured the new ringing frequency because uh, adding a capacitor there actually reduces the ringing frequency. Uh, and I determined that the new ringing frequency was 564 kilohertz with a 157 nanofarad capacitor on there. And with this information, uh, you can go through a set of calculations to determine what the parasitics of your design are. So in this case, my parasitic capacitance, which is from my devices and from my actual mounting method, turns out to be uh, this value here. And my parasitic inductance, which uh, comes from the same thing, the packages, the physical packages that the MOSFETs are in, and as well as the mounting, mounting method, I uh, determined that these are my two values here. And from these, uh, you can determine that your optimal snubber resistance and snubber capacitance are, are these two here. Now, I'll, I'll show you how I did these. Um, there's a great application note on this, actually. Uh, this one here made by, uh, uh, let's see, uh, I think this is, uh, yeah, NXP Semiconductors made this application note. And it, it, this is great. It actually just goes through uh, the calculations you need. So essentially, this uh, C add is what I added, that 157 nanofarads uh, is my C add here, and my my X is the difference between the first ringing frequency and the second ringing frequency, so you plug that in right there, and uh, from that you can determine your parasitic capacitance. Now, oops, and now from uh, from the from your ringing frequency and your parasitic capacitance, uh, you can determine your parasitic inductance. So we calculated uh, both of these just now from this application note. Uh, but now you have to calculate your your optimum snubber values uh, from those. 
So further on down here, you can see here's a classic uh, diagram of a of a node that's ringing. And what I chose is I, cho I chose uh, critical damping. So you can see these curves here are actually different damping coefficients. And the critical damping coefficient I chose is 1 uh, because you can see, I think the blue one, yeah, the, the trace in blue here is, is critical damping. And you can see it just goes up once and, and settles right away. Uh, whereas if you, if you do a damping uh, uh, coefficient of less than 1, It'll, it'll tend to still have this peak here and ring for a little bit. Uh, if you have a damping coefficient greater than one, uh, it'll do this kind of thing here where it will slowly come up to value, uh, but uh, you'll be dissipating a little bit more power in, in your snubber there. Um, so I chose a critical damping value of one for my calculations. And uh, once again, you can just go through your calculations here. Uh, you, uh, you can solve for the snubbing resistance here. Let's see if I can find the equation. That's buried in here somewhere. Oh, here we are. So, yeah, you plug in this here with your uh, your your inductance and your capacitance and your damping ratio to get your optimum snubber resistance for that damping uh, ratio or factor. So from that, you get your optimum snubber resistance. Then, uh, same thing. You can calculate your optimum snubber capacitance here with your uh, your ringing frequency and your uh, optimum snubber resistance. So once you have those two values, which I got here, uh, 2.15 ohms and 47.5 nanofarads, uh, then from those, uh, it's as simple as uh, finding those values and using them to uh, um, to put on the circuit. And in this case, I used 48 nanofarads and 2.5 ohms because that's all I could find. It's kind of what I whacked together with some really scabby parts. Now, there's also the issue of power dissipation. If you actually go through the effort of uh, figuring out the power di dissipation of this, which uh, is actually pretty straightforward to calculate, um, you can determine it by uh, the 47.55 nanofarads. So if we go, if we go 47.55 nanofarads, times the voltage we expect to have across it. So like I said, I'm, I'm going to be having a roughly 80 volt battery pack. So there's going to be at least that across it plus some additional ringing. So we could probably say there's going to be maybe 100 volts uh, across that. So we're going to square that voltage because the energy stored in the capacitor is 1 half CV squared. Uh, in this case though, since the capacitor both needs to be discharging or it needs to charge and discharge, we're going to omit the one half. So I got capacitance there, I got voltage. Now there's one more thing I also need is the switching frequency, of course, to actually turn this into power, because power is uh, energy per second. Uh, whereas this, if I was just to leave it like it is now, this is just energy period. So we need to turn it into uh, energy per second. So we're going to multiply this by my switching frequency, which we're going to say is 16,000 for, for example case. So I'm going to calculate this out. So let's go 47.55 nanofarads times 100 squared multiplied by 16,000. So I get 7.608 watts. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of power dissipation in, in, this, in this snubber here. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to split it up uh, into a bunch of snubbers because one snubber, uh, you know, I'd need like a 10 watt resistor or something. And, and uh, yeah, that'd be pretty difficult to design in. So what I'm going to do, um, the best thing I've been able to find is uh, I'm going to be doing a 10 ohm resistor whoa, resistor, uh, in series with a 10 nanofarad capacitor. And um, in series with 10 nanofarad cap. And of course, you have to take, in, take into consideration that the resistor is going to be dissipating almost all the power here. So I'm actually going to make this a 3 watt resistor. 
And as well, the capacitor has to take the full voltage. It's going to have to take that 100 volts that's going to be seen across it. So I'm going to put make this a 200 volt uh, capacitor. Uh, then I'm actually going to need, since I'm going to need five of these, because I'm going to, I'm going to put uh, a 10 ohm resistor in series with a 10 nanofarad capacitor, and then I'm going to put five of those in parallel with each other, which will get me to a two, uh, the equivalent of a uh, 2.5 ohm resistor and a 50 nanofarad capacitor. So that's what, I, what I'm going to do here, and uh, I'll implement that, and I should get a uh, waveform uh, probably better than this one here, because I'm going to make it with uh, you know, proper parts that aren't just kind of scabbed together with wires flying everywhere. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I have to mention in, in this video, just that uh, I had to go through this process here to design this uh, snubbing, snubber uh, circuit, and uh, I mean, after this is resolved, I should be good to uh, start some more uh, aggressive testing on this thing. All right, till next time, I'll see ya.